Parental discretion is advised. Ryback's gains are our losses. Is Ring of Honor not quite ready for prime time? Stump speech is galore because it is the season. And special guest, the man, the myth, the mythological man, the Shireman. All that and more this week. So stick around. Hey guys, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show 345, live from the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I am Sorgatron. With me as usual, over there, over there on the couch, is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. It's Erection Night! It's, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got his on. I got an erection on. I am hard for wrestling and something. That's weird. It's a little bit weird. What is he doing over there? Where's he going? The the laptop came unplugged. Oh, okay. The cord. And my my erection bumped it out of the the laptop. (laughs) Gotten away. Also, also coming at us from the lunchbox cave is Papa Lunchbox. What's up, y'all? This is Papa Lunchbox. Uh, that's exactly right. It's election night, and Sork throws me off every single week uh, when he calls it the Lunchbox Cave. Dude, I, I kind of call it that every week, don't I? It always, always throws me off. Always. And also coming up from us, coming at us from San Antonio, Texas, is the Wrestle Fan. Where the Wrestle Fan? Where they haven't invented voting yet. No, uh, I'm not participating this year in erection night, mainly because I have to have an erection in my own district, so. (laughs) All right. Uh, Mm. That's confusing and depressing at the same time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And also joining us for the My my erection is a two-party system. (laughs) Oh. I'm I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. Also joining us... uh, Okay, uh, joining us for the first time ever, Yin's team coach extraordinaire, the Tuesday Night Delight, the Charmin. Evening, fellas. Uh, all this boner talk is really turning me off, so um, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Glad you could join us. Now, Danny, you've been listening for a while, and you said, hey, where, where, how come I can't get on? We, I don't know why we never thought of bringing you on before. I think it's ridiculous. It, it's actually pretty insulting, uh, to tell you the truth. So, um, hopefully tonight I can make you regret this decision a uh, hundred <laughs> times over. <laughs> we'll listen, see. listen. If you've ever listened to the show before, then you know there's absolutely nothing you can do that's going to make us not invite you back. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because, I mean, <laughs> we, we've talked about Hulk Hogan's porn at length. We've talked about China's porn at length. I've insulted women, TNA, foreign countries, uh, previous hosts have insulted Samoans. I've insulted a midget. Y- you've insulted a midget. Uh, previous hosts have insulted Samoans. Uh, Mentally challenged yeah. people. Thank and you. we brought them back. <laughs> and brought them back. <laughs> Jimmy DeMarco has committed emergency rape multiple times <laughs> on the air. There is nothing you can do. Emergency rape of Sorg's ear. <laughs> yeah. And we rewarded him with uh, and with more, trophies and batteries and uh, more appearances. Uh, honorary host, hostness, hosting. You can't, you can't keep those headphones on for long, Sorg. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. Wow, wow. Anyways, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can drop us a line. You can find out more information, including uh, other stuff we're posting up there at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Of course, we're on iTunes. We're on Blip TV. We're on your Roku box on the Blip TV app. You can watch us on your TV. We're also on Stitcher. A lot of people are starting to find us over there. Uh, we're on a few other places. Just search Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, where you get your podcast, where you get your video. If we're not there, let us know. And where can you let us know, guys? Good, good times. times. That's good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can also drop us a line on the hotline at 412-206-WMS0. Drop us a line on Twitter at Mayhem Show. And buy the app, the WMS uh, Gold. The app. Exclusive content and connections, all that stuff I just talked about. It's on your iOS app store. It's on your Amazon app store, Android and iPhone. Or I'm sorry, iOS devices, including the iPad of any size. 
It'll work on there. Don't worry about it. It's a dollar ninety nine. Support the show and get easier easy access to your mayhem every week on your device of choice. So let's get right into it. The only way we know how with the fan mail. Uh, I think Papa Lunchbox, you got the first one here. I do, I do, and the title of this one is just the facts with Big PPC. Mm. Hey. 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 What's up, Mayhem Crew? It's me. It's me. It's at Big Pip C. Oh, gallows is in aces and eights, yeah. I'm happy. Hope there is more reveals. Will Luke Gallows ever possibly be on Mayhem Show? Probably not. Other than that, TNA was alright. ROH Wrestling with Jay Lethal and Kevin Steen. Great! Generico! Ole! Ole! Team Masked Marvels with Art Truth and Little Jimmy vs. Primetime Players and the United States Champion Antonio Cesaro. Great way to start off Raw instead of BS promo that usually starts and ends up in Teddy Long Tag Team Match Players. Holla, 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 holla. This time we just got a tag match. Mine is the bullshit, not bad. Fantastic match by all. Masked Marvels are great at winning matches that mean nothing. Props to at EGA Ole. They are great. I enjoy Ray and Kara and many luchadors, and I mean no harm, just like giving facts. Amazing, by the way. Facts. 3MB versus the Usos. Lots of tag matches tonight, not a bad thing, fact. I do not care if it makes me mean. Glad Jerry Lawler is better in all, but I like having JR and JBL. Fact. Brad Maddox is a good wrestler. I don't think he could beat Ryback, but I hope he does. You never know next week, apparently. Fact. Team Cobra actually won the match. I will say nothing except this will end soon. I hope Santino is better than terrible but worse than shitty. A compliment. Woo woo woo. They won one. Fact. Barrett vs. Seamus on Ion TV this week. When's the fucking watch at Judges says, Wah! Just watch. Fact. Wade Barrett, he is fucking over in his hometown. Eh, Barrett Barrett. <clears throat> Bet it fucking barrage. Fact. Vicky has an evil maniacal laugh. Fact. John Cena should not try to open doors when he's when in towel it was cold. Wasn't it, John? <laughs> Fact. AJ Cena promo. AJ Cena porno happened in Lunchbox's head. How was it? Wait for his answer. Fantastic! You didn't answer the question. <laughs> he answered for me. He said dot 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 fantastic, and he's right. <laughs> team Punk now is Team Ziggler, Miz, Del Rio, Sandow, and Rhodes versus Team Foley. So still, I guess Team Hill, No, Brian Kane, Kingston, Orton, and who replaces Ryback? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Six, seven, eight question marks. So now it's triple threat Ryback versus Punk versus Cena. Ryback and Cena tag against Ziggler and Punk. Why not just make the fatal four way match with all four against Punk for his title since Vince is handing out title shots willy nilly? I agree. I mean, shit. One pay per view with no Cena, and seems like Vince just threw him in the title picture like the Rock, who normally returns and gets title shots anyways. Fact, seen the god booed. <laughs> Maybe it's because I have been playing Top WWE 13 and just love wrestling that I can watch it all the time and say I enjoyed Raw even if they completely changed the pay per view from last week. They needed Punk to defend the title instead, it needed to happen. Wrestle fan, you may cover your ears. Just kidding, 19 year old, calm down. <laughs> Going back to past, thought if you could have any diva or former diva in the porno, who would it be? Trish or AJ, I say. Shout out to the home porno brother. What was your favorite top five pay-per-view? I would have to say Fall Brawl, Halloween Havoc, King of the Ring, Royal Rumble, and 
Rust Kamania. Uh, this is in worst to best order. <laughs> Hashtag Sinus Penis Troublemaker. Till next week, it's me. It's me. It's Big PPC. I turned the same page as WrestleMania on 11 11 12. Same day as TNA pay per view. Lucky me. I hope it is good. Okay. Wow. And before we move on, I. I well, we I, got a question, so. I, well, I have to address this uh, uh, flyer or image that he put in the bottom of this email. Yes. Yeah, it's now, pretty it, tremendous. It, it's WMS presents Mayhem Survivor Series Team PPC versus Team Hold on. EGA, which is El Gran uh, Agu. Azul. Azul, whatever. Okay. Now, on Team BP, on PPC, now, this is without asking anyone. <laughs> like, this is Team... There this, is no discussion. This no, is the first we've seen This it. is the team he made, okay? Team PPC is him, me, Lunchbox, <laughs> Mad Mike, and Sorg. Versus Team Gran Azul, which is Azul, Russell Fan... Riz, Bobby, and Wheels. By the way, I love that they put me on the team with the other Mexican. Listen. <laughs> We're going to win. There is, there is no situation that you could name while looking at this lineup in which the Mexicans are going to win. I don't know, man. Wheels can have, have his cart loaded. I'm going to uh, push him out of the ring. <laughs> yeah. Well, not only that, and I'm pretty sure I have one person on that team that really doesn't want to be on my team, as according to the chat room says. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much gonna be me and Bobby uh, taking on the rest of the damn <laughs> show. <laughs> it's gonna be Bobby, uh, Bobby WrestleFan and Azu versus uh, Big PPC, me, Lunchbox, Mad Mike, and Sorgatron. All we're going to do is we're going to put Mad Mike in the ring, and the rest of us are going to go get a beer. And then we're going to come back, (laughs) and the match is going to be and the match is going to be over. There's some strategy happening here. Bobby's in the chat room saying, Wheels will catapult me at them, and I'll crush them. Wheels is going to be laying on the mat because I'm going to push him off the apron. (laughs) Listen. He says we'll be asleep. He's going to push him off the apron if he's inside the ring, though. Oh, I will. (laughs) <laughs> we'll presume that we got him in the ring. Okay, the first of all. Will, yeah, we'll get then I'll the tip ring. over his chair. Oh. No, you don't understand. That's this a is, threat. This is a Survivor Series match, okay? All right. Oh. Uh, number one, I am host of the year. You forgot You forgot <laughs> guest of the year, Bo Diggity, mm-hmm. who is definitely going to run in and help me toss yeah, wheels yeah. out Big of the PPC ring. Yeah, PPC says Bo Diggity said he was bad uh, because he was left out on Twitter. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, Bo Diggity is going to come down, and me and him are going to toss wheels out of the ring. Mm-hmm. Because, handicap or not, this is Survivor Series match, and I'm going to win. Done. <laughs> what do you think, Charmin? <sighs> You know, Bobby is a lot tougher than he looks because, I mean, Johnstown is... You know, the mean streets of Johnstown. Pretty, yeah, I mean, you know, they had a flood there. Multiple floods. Yeah, it'd be there. tough and a good swimmer. A good swimmer? Mm-hmm. I, I think you have to have a, a snorkeling license. I, I'm not even sure what qualifies you that, to, to live there. I mean, so... Bobby's an underdog. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would be very worried about Bobby. I you know I, I think he I think bad things are going to happen uh, when he gets in the ring there. So exactly. All right, let's let's get on these questions here. Uh, so what uh, are your f- top five pay per views? Wait, there was one before that though. There was one before that. Uh, well, that's the first one I looked want, at. What diva do you want to see in a porn? Mickey James. Uh, AJ. But she's already in porn. Yeah, Mickey James. That... Like, well, not in a porn. I mean, she's she's had pictures. I, I don't think she's been in a porn yet. I want a full on porn. Full on. Yep. Full on. Full frontal. Full on. Full on. Money All shot. Hardcore. hardcore. All of it. Porn. Hardcore porn. Uh, Straight up. Yeah, I'll I'll just go AJ with this one, or or roll back and uh, how about some Lita? You know. Hey. So, LB. Get into that. LB. Uh, if uh, Lita is a good choice, uh, also Sunny in her prime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That could probably, be fun. I'm sure she'll um, do. It's sure, probably out there somewhere. <laughs> I, I'm sure she'll she'll do one now, given how much she'll do anything for money. Uh, mm. Russell fan. I, uh, well, I I would also pay high money for a karma. 
karma for me. Of course, of course. <laughs> Russell Finn? Um, I don't know. I have a spot. I have a soft spot for Caitlin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Charmin? Stacy Keebler. What is oh. wrong with you guys? Ooh. Nice. Hey, she is. She is classy though. She I didn't classy. think about that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna make it she's, better. She's been tainted by George Clooney. She's not classy, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Bobby George Clooney cock will suck the class out of any room. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Riz in the chat room says Beth Phoenix, Bobby saying Layla and Rosa Mendez together. Um, Bob, Big PPC says soft core porn. I think Mickey James, or I think Mickey. I love that there's a differential between the whole soft core and I guess the, so who, the opposite. Who do we hard, want to see soft core? Who do you want to see hardcore? Let's go uh, Karma soft core and uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Karma could do soft core porn. No. Why are we? <laughs> I don't know. If, if you don't mind, this is a good chance for me to interject one of my uh, uh, best jokes here. Actually, sorry to, uh, to use my best material early here, but you know what the difference between soft core and hardcore is, of course, right? No any outy. Um, <laughs> that's all I know. <laughs> it settles in. It wow, settles that just, in. just ran right up on me. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> all right, let's go by that one. Okay, fa- top five uh, pay per views. Uh, no particular order uh, for me. I would say uh, definitely Rumble Survivor Series, old school Survivor Series. Um, uh, I mean, WrestleMania, it's got to be in there. Uh, uh, one of the new concepts. I'm digging more money in the bank. Like, like like we mentioned, it's kind of become the new Royal Rumble. And uh, oh, you know what? Let me let me next money in the bank. Uh, change that to World War Three, Three Ring Royal oh, Rumble. Oh, 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 I mean, come on. And uh, Hog Wild slash Road Wild. Mm. Pay per view in the middle of a bike rally. That's not like the greatest like feel for a pay per view when you're having like Rey Mysterio and a bunch of motorcycles. <laughs> they couldn't have charged tickets to an event. Though. No, they didn't. It was free. They lost money on it every year. <laughs> they completely lost money on it every year. It was it was a glory project for Eric Bischoff. He's like, I want to do the surges because I think I'm a biker. Mm. Yeah. Because I think I'm like, <laughs> and you get that cool shot of like all the wrestlers riding their Harleys, like Rick Steiner and just, Sting and all love- these other guys. That was cool. I just love the the idea of Hog Wild like came up from like Eric Bischoff having a midlife crisis. Pretty and much, like- pretty much, yes, yes. How about you, Russell fan? Eric, Eric Bischoff's entire life has been a midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Russell fan. Uh, I think yeah, Royal Rumble, Money in the Bank, uh, you have to throw in WrestleMania, Survivor Series. I like Survivor Series, especially like when I first started watching it, like in two thousand two, two thousand three. Those were like some really good ones. Um, that's four. Um, yeah, and I'll, you know what? Yeah, I'll throw in Hog Wild from the stuff I've seen of it. I just I like the concept. I like the outdoorness. All right, lunchbox. Um, I don't remember wh- which one it was called. It was the first, the first big ECW pay per view. Barely uh, legal. Like where the power went out. Barely legal. Barely was it? Barely legal. I think it was. Yeah, that was good shit. Uh, oh, really legal. Oh, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for Halloween Havoc. Uh, 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 <laughs> ex-wife uh, did... third one. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I read this wrong, but still funny. D- big PPC. DDP's ex-wife did Eric Bischoff crisis penis. I don't even know what that means. Wow. You get to read it in the Russian accent, then it makes sense. DDP's ex-wife did Eric Bischoff crisis penis. Sorry, where were you, LB? Uh, um, so, uh, what did I say? So we had Barely Legal and Halloween Havoc and, oh, let's throw in a fun one. Like, I, I agree. Money in the Bank's been pretty good and unpredictable. Um, and then, uh, uh, WrestleMania and then Royal Rumble. Anyone, anyone who's listened to the show, uh, for any length of time knows that Royal Rumble is my favorite pay-per-view of the year. Mm-hmm. It is, mm-hmm. uh, Aces number one. So. All right. Charmin? I think the Royal Rumble has to be number one in most cases. There, it's the the, the best pay per view year in and year out, no doubt about that. WrestleMania is right up there. Um, Halloween Havoc back in the days was was fantastic. Um, it's at three, I think Old School King of the Ring was was quite good. Mm-hmm. You know, um, way way back when. And uh, what did I get up to four there? 
uh, money in the bank then, you know. Easy. All right, how about you, Chach? Um, uh, let's start with, I have to agree, Royal Rumble. Um, that's the best pay-per-view by far. Um, consistently. Yeah, consistently the best pay-per-view by far. Um, especially if you go in uh, completely blank, no spoilers. Uh, it, it, I mean, Royal Rumble sets up everything. Sorry, mm-hmm. Lunchbox. Um, so... What? Because <laughs> of that one year I spoiled it for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, if you yeah, go into Royal right. Rumble, no spoilers. It, uh, Royal Rumble is the best pay-per-view because not only is a match the best, uh, but it sets up a lot of storyline. Um, then I would have to say um, King of the Ring. Um, mm. Probably WrestleMania in the middle because that, I mean, that, that's middle of the road for me. Uh, it's not always as epic as it's supposed to be. Um, like this past year. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's three. I'm going to have to say uh, Elimination Chamber. It's growing on me. I, I love Elimination Chamber. It's kind of becoming a secondary Royal Rumble kind of situation. As long as the Elimination Chamber ends the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, for no, ambulance match. Hmm. And I'm gonna have to go with war games. War think, games. Yeah. Man, that, that was that wasn't uh, always the pay per view. Like that's just fall brawl. With, but but the one yeah. with war games, you mean? Yeah. yeah. So, but which I think was fall brawl. Yeah. So. so. Or sometimes it was wrestle war. I think. Well. I, just, I mean, I mean, you can just count that whatever. Any works. pay-per-view that has a tournament-style match set up automatically makes it in the top five yeah. for me. And then anything involving <laughs> a cage gimmick. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Especially, I mean, that was, and that's what I loved about WCW because they weren't afraid to toss in an extra ring. Right. You know, let's like, <laughs> they afraid to toss in. Or sometimes two in the case of World War Three. You know, I mean, just like. Let's just throw another ring in here, you know? It was very gimmicky. They weren't afraid to do it. Let's just add a couple more levels of this cage. Hey, and stick in uh, you know what Zeus. This, you know what thing. this pay-per-view needs? Some zombies? More cages. Oh. <laughs> That's ECW that did the zombies. Uh, so, um, Excellent. Thank you, Big PBC. Thought-provoking questions, as usual. About pornography. About and pornography and pay-per-views. <clears throat> Uh, we did have. Did anybody catch what the voicemail was on here? The voicemail was from one Bo Diggity. Oh, then we it gotta was play it. Twenty minutes of him coming. Oh, then we gotta play it. Um, no, and there's another one here by Bobby F. J. Townsend. Yes. Yeah, here we go I'll, with the voicemail. Bo fucking Diggity. Now, Sorg, I'm really sorry about this. I know this is two angles to come at the show from. I'm real sorry about this, but listen, I can't deprive the nation, nay, region, nay, localization of the Wrestling Mayhem Show people of a good, solid woo. It's not a Tuesday, it's not a Wednesday, or a Thursday, whenever you listen to this damn show without a woo from Bo Diggy. So, woo! Watch my video. <laughs> woo! Bo F. Diggity. The F. This is for fruit salad. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> and all of the many vitamins that are beneficial to your health. Yeah. No good joke there. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> no, he said watch this video. Is there another video? I didn't see, in? Video. I didn't see I one sent in. You know why Bo Diggity won the award that he won? Huh. Because he of- listens. He listens and he reacts. Yes. We, we because told the F him, stands for fruit salad? No, we told him that we were enjoying the way that the F kept changing. <laughs> and so he threw a curveball out there, and now instead of fucking or fornication, it was fruit salad. Yeah, yeah. He evolves fruit it. Salad. He evolves it. That's great. All right, a couple emails just came in here. Bobby F. Town first, and then somebody has one that I'm sure is going to be in Spanish, a wrestle fan. Um, Mayhem Show Crew, what is up? I hope everyone is enjoying election night i for one am glad it's over soon and there will be one week reprieve from the next cycle of campaign ads 
Anyways, it's kind of like when the iPads come out. You got one week before the new rumors start, right? Uh, WrestleFan and I were talking about Fandango. Fandango. Fandango today That's what the on the o Facebook so page. By the way, I guess, like I said, I fell asleep early in and out of, uh, of, of Raw last night. And one of the points I woke up was this Fandango. Oh, I was so confused. Um, <laughs> today on the Facebook page, he thinks the gimmick is going to fail. I think the gimmick mm-hmm. is going to be a success. You know why I can't get Fandango's free theme song out of my head from this video. And he did send the video. Let me, if I, I didn't it's get the It's from a WWE, um, uh, uh, oh, that's loud. It's Sorry. from a WWE, uh, dark match from a SmackDown, I think. Oh, he's dancing. He's dancing. This is from like an NXT or? <laughs> no, this is a dark match because he's wrestling Sammy Callahan. Oh my, look at him dance. Oh man, I need to watch this. Ma- oh, this is just an intro. Damn it! Yeah, no. yeah, apparently it is. Is he? So he's Magic Mike? Is that what's happening? Because I know Sammy. Sammy kicked the shit out of him. Literally, yeah, it was. A, it was a dark match, though. I don't think it was really for- on this one. Uh, no, I'm yeah. just guessing. Oh no, 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 it's a dark match. So I can't imagine that they he gave, they gave him that much having, running. I what? Having seen Sammy wrestle. Uh, I think I would giggle just watching Sammy kick this guy in the head a few hundred <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah. It would be it would be Hulk punching Thor giggling. <laughs> Anyways, uh, back to the email. Think outside the box, young wrestle fan. Embrace the Fandango. And it's really not too much different than Johnny Curtis has been. Actually, it kind of is. I mean, <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, it's been, been kind of weird this entire time, right? Yeah, but he's not Magic Mike weird. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I can I see him going that, there. I know that WWE's theory is, we don't have anything for this person. Here's a creative idea. Let's make them a male stripper. Mm. <laughs> they did that with Kurt Hawkins and Nyla Rex, and now they're doing it with Johnny Curtis. Yeah, one quit the Bring company. Bring back so Kevin goes. Nash. Oh, yeah, yeah, he can make this uh, this go. Moving on, I think that we had a breakthrough with Randy Orton this week. He actually lost the match to Wade Barrett, uh, but with the help of Alberto Del Rio, which is fine, I guess. Also, the fact that they no-sold a hot pot of coffee by softening its strength with a handful of napkins. RK, oh no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> also, I got a point. I, uh, LB, did you know that uh, uh, Wade Barrett is being featured on main event tomorrow night? I did know that he's wrestling against Sheamus, which is sure to be a fairly boring match because Sheamus isn't really that impressive. <laughs> oh, I think it'll be fine. And, but it's in the UK. Hey, wait. And by the way, great angle we had there. I, I kind of Sorry. on you. Sorry on. About that. Time out. <laughs> What's up? Question for you. Yeah. What's the main event? Uh, it's on Ion Television. Uh, it's a what wonderful the whole team show. Was that? That's, it's on Ion Television. I don't know. I get it on my antenna, so. Sorry. It, it, Sorry. It, the substation is where I, I watch He Man at midnight and everything. What? Who? What? Don't care. Don't care. Where are you now? <laughs> what? No. I want to come back and it's like, where's, where's LB now? Um, <laughs> Brad Maddox's promo sure. wasn't the sure. greatest, but that dude tried. Sure. I give him two rye balls out of four. Also, what's up with R Truth defeating both Cesaro and Gabriel in the last week? What happened to their pushes? Little Jimmy is confused. <laughs> so, with that, I bid you a fun farewell and leave you with this. This is the thing that wouldn't work on my iPad last night. What? Look at this photograph. <laughs> what is... What is this? Oh, no! Teddy DiBiase and Virgil! Oh, no! <laughs> that literally was the greatest thing that happened last night in the Raw Hangout. Is this what you guys kept sending each other? Yes! <laughs> because I would just, like, hear, look at this photograph and get really mad because there's Nickelback in my ears. Um... Hey, uh, sorry about that. All right, now there should, should be one more. That you I think didn't there, finish the email. There's more? Yes. What did, what did I miss? It's Bobby F.J. Town. The, the F, F is for from. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Uh, WrestleFan, I think you got this last one. Okay, there's one from Zero2K. He says, hey, Mayhemers, this is Zero. Quick mail. I know wrestling outside the States rarely or ever gets any love, but I wanted to promote NJPW's King of Pro Wrestling from October. It won't only be the best show of the year, but it has to be the best match of the year with Tana- with Hiroshi Tanahashi versus uh, Suzuki. I'm not sure the last one. Uh, the show is on YouTube. Try to check it out if you can. Later, Zero out. Check it out. Go check it out. Um, Thank you, Zero 2K. Okay, and I think no, no more slipped in under the wire. 
So, uh, with that, let's go to the uh, the amateur <laughs> funneling down segment. <laughs> Texas Indy Ma- Anarchy. What? Texas Anarchy in the uh, chat room said, I thought Lunchbox was about to emergency rape me with those angles. <laughs> 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 Wrestle fan, tell us what's going on in the Indy Minute. The Indy Minute for this week, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to dive into this week in indie wrestling. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, something that has to do with our good friends over at Sorgatron Media. Which what? Is from that guy, yeah. Um, uh, IWC uh, is uh, this this coming weekend uh, on the 10th, which is uh, Friday. Uh, it, or no, I'm sorry, Saturday, is uh, doing Combat in Clearfield 4 in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. So the Sorgatron Media crew will be there. Looks like a really awesome event, uh, including a, uh, the, well, the, basically the main uh, event or, or so. Uh, there will be a 20-man battle royal where the winner will face Logan Chulo for the IWC Heavyweight title later in the night. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, and there's the, a lot of great talent on this uh, on this card. Um, so if mm-hmm. you, and I believe they do Combat in Clearfield every, like, couple months or so like they two, do or, uh, at least twice a year sometimes three yeah so. so definitely i would encourage people to go check this show out uh mm-hmm. and like i said sorgatron media will be there sorg and chachi you know running the running the camera work so yep, and yeah jp helping out with the nice hair um i want to point out a couple things first uh, a couple people on here of note uh, uh gregory irons is actually uh pictured here in the in the uh battle royal so uh that, that's a good name that uh popping up over in prime wrestling a lot of course you know he's the one that got the rub from cole cabana and cm punk uh, last year uh also on this uh fighting a uh, friend of friend of the show dalton castle is bobby fish who i understand mm. will be debuting for ring of honor uh, officially uh in the coming weeks on television i know that because i watched the, the recordings there um <laughs> yeah, oh, like gregory island against andrew palace andrew palace really i think we might have talked about this a little bit last week uh really impressive showing with zima ion uh i know that's not technically on the dvds here uh but definitely like worth worth checking out him keep an eye he's kind of one of those guys that's uh, you know to keep an eye on that's uh kind of uh coming out of nowhere there in iwc also i uh, just noticed this colin delaney yeah, of, Colin Delaney versus of, Dennis Gregory of ECW fame in uh, Who the Chikara. fuck is Colin Delaney? <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and wait, wait, wait a minute, if Delaney wins, he gets a tag title shot if he beats Dennis Gregory. So I don't know who the hell he's going to team with, but um, and then uh, but, uh, Johnny Gargano, he got a broken face. Oh, oh, really? I didn't hear about that. Really? Yeah, yeah. He. Uh, oh, I thought you guys would know about that. Now I actually have to look it up so I can speak facts. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Go, I, I haven't been. I haven't been on, in the loop with Prime Wrestling for the last couple of months. So, um, yeah. So, so there you go. Go check that out. I mean, this is out there. It'll be up on DVD. We're gonna do our digital downloads and everything like we usually do. Uh, so mm-hmm. go check that out. A lot of a lot of people have been buying the digital downloads this week of a few of our shows. So it's good to see that that that's taken off. I'm really happy to see that. Very so cool. all right. Um, uh, back to you there, Russell fan. Yeah, so uh, if you want to get tickets for that event, go to IWCWrestling.com and uh, get inf- more information on them. Uh, though, if you are in the West Newton, PA area that night, our good friends at RWA, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, will be uh, holding an event, Open Season 4. Uh, Sorgatron Media, the uh, the B team of sorts, I guess, will be in attendance for that one. B is uh, for so- boobs because we send the ladies. That B is for boo. That's legit. Uh, so, I, so I encourage you to go to that show if you want uh, your cameraman to, I guess, be a nicer view I, of sorts. Um, so, yeah, uh, nothing against Sora Chachi. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm Chachi, sorry. Chachi, WrestleFan just said he doesn't like your boobs. My boobs? Yeah. What? <laughs> This, this is what happens when you go out to take a smoke on the end of it. I love you for your intellect, not your not your features. Okay, your intellect, not your features. He says. Hey, hey, wait until we get in the ring, bitch. <laughs> Survivor Series. I'm gonna I'm gonna toss wheels and then I'm coming for your ass. Yeah, I'm gonna motorboat your non-existent tits. That doesn't make um, any sense. That is so <laughs> strange. <laughs> so oh, awesome. like, move no, on before it gets no, weirder. So scared. No. So Johnny Gargano suffered a broken nose. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. From Akira Tozawa. Akira Akira Uh, Tozawa. Kick in the face, but he's not going to miss any ring time. So. Good for him. I, I think that was at the Dragon Gate USA show. I know he wrestled. It was, um, it was indeed Dragon Gate. He keeps getting hurt at Dragon Gate. I think that should tell him something. 
<laughs> hey, that shit's. In, I, 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 have you, I don't know if anyone's ever seen Akira Tadara. He will fuck your face up. I don't, I don't blame him. Um, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, going back to uh, actually RWA, uh, some of the card for that show: Shane Taylor will be taking on Kato. Um, Lodi of WCW fame will be there. There will be a women's match: Sassy Steffi versus Darcy Dixon. Um, so it's going to be a great time. If you want more information and uh, tickets for that event, go to rwa.live.com. And if you're in the West Newton, PA area, definitely go check them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to transition now from the Pennsylvania area down to the Texas area, this coming Going weekend. South. I'm sorry? Going down south. Going down south, down way south, um, to uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, this Sunday, uh, I will be at. I will be attending, as long as with many other people in the Texas area, the uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling Lone Star Classic event uh, at the Mohawk in Austin, Texas, nine one two Red River Street. It's ACW's biggest tournament of the year. Um, Twelve people competing, uh, one tournament to be crowned the uh, Lone Star Classic champion, and in turn to be crowned the ACW the ACW Heavyweight Champion. The championship will be defended all throughout the tournament, uh, since Heavyweight Champion Jake is Puskin is involved. Uh, a lot of great names in that tournament. Uh, Jerry Lynn, Showtime Scott Summers, ACH, uh, tons of great stuff. Uh, and that's uh, and there's going to be more matches besides the uh, tournament matches. So I definitely encourage you to go check that out. Uh, that's uh, this Sunday, the uh, 11th at Mohawk in Austin, Texas. Um, and also... Uh, the if you can't make it out to that event, the very next night, the mon- that Monday, the Monday night in Live Oak, Texas, which is about you know in the San Antonio area, uh, will be uh, Hooligans in, in Live Oak uh, Showtime Scott Summers Birthday Bash event. Uh, eight big matches. The wrestling the wrestling show is a hundred percent free. It's a free show, um, no charge for for the actual wrestling show. I believe you do maybe have to pay cover uh, if you want to stay later for the after party of sorts. Um, but yeah, it's and that's going to be a really awesome show too. Um, so if you want. Uh, Anarchy in two straight nights. Uh, that's definitely where you're going to check them out. If you want more information and tickets, uh, you can go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com to keep to keep up with everything ACW. And I hope to see everyone uh, at those two events. Anyone in the Texas area. Uh, and the final thing I want to talk about on this week's Indie Minute is something Sorg mentioned. And that's the fact that Ring of Honor this past weekend was in Pittsburgh for their final TV taping of 2012. And I believe, Sorg, you were in attendance. I was in attendance. Yes, it was. Um, I, I wanted to get some of the guys on. I actually went. Uh, Missy went with us uh, as part of her birthday. And uh, we, we went with uh, the Mike Munns and uh, Sean Graham, uh, friends of ours. You probably see me tweeting with them uh, out there. Uh, and it was a different. And this was like, I, I really wanted. This was kind of an experiment for me. Because these are two guys that. That we don't talk a lot of wrestling with, you know, but just we were at some uh, social media, you know, mixer or whatever, and they was like, so you see Ring of Honor, and I'm pod like, camp? what's that? It was a, it was a pod camp thingy. Pod uh, camp? It was it was like one of the evening with pod camp things. One of those panels we did at the where there was the stuffed bears and everything, and all the fun pictures came out of it. No. <laughs> Anyways, but no, but out of nowhere, they're like, do you watch Ring of Honor? And started this discussion about that. And I'm like, one, you guys watch Ring of Honor? Anybody watches Ring of Honor? And like I said, these are guys that are kind of like out of, you know, kind of what I would expect uh, for wrestling fans. Uh, so we've been talking about it for weeks and this came up and I was like, we got to go together. We, this, this, this would just be a hell of an experience. Uh, so we went down there, Ross Driver Ice Gardens. Uh, I had been there once before, before the, uh, the, the ceiling caved in under the snow the one year uh, for a, a Steel City Wrestle Fest, which was definitely not set up near as well as this was. Um, they set up on one end and I think it's going to look really good on TV. Because they really kind of packed everybody into one end of the of the arena. Uh, we were up in the stands in general mission, which you know was fine for me. Uh, probably about uh, four or five rows around. They were mostly full. Really, uh, really good crowd for most of the night. One thing I did notice: um, they have a fluffer. <laughs> a fluffer. That's what we started calling him. He was a, he was pretty much a crowd fluffer. He was the one. If there wasn't anything going on, he made sure a chant got started or people started banging on the. Uh, on the boards. Really? Yeah. There's this one guy. It was always that one guy. We, we know it was it, he was with ROH because he was throwing out swag before the show. 
And was he just like moving to different sections? Or he was, he was, because he was over on like one one side, one corner of the ring, and then like later in the night we would see him on the other corner of the ring starting stuff. Wow. So I mean, but it's a really good idea, especially if you want to make sure people are into it on TV, um, and just kind of just a little bit, you know, the incite people a little bit. Um, really good show. They did about probably six episodes and you know they would go through you know again you're seeing just the matches not any of the other kind of pre-recorded stuff or anything like that uh you know there'd be a few promos there through the night and everything like that um so you got a lot of wrestling we paid 20 dollars for general mission i think you could pay up to 40 or 50 dollars for ringside we got there the bell rang at seven we left about a quarter to twelve that was a lot of wrestling <laughs> for twenty bucks. Yeah, for twenty bucks. Yeah, and like I said, and where we were at, like in the stands, where you saw everything, you were fine. You, you know, you don't have to get down there if you don't want to. Um, it was really cool to see some of the locals. Uh, Jimmy Nuts, uh, former RWA champion, been showing up a lot lately in IWC. Did the opening match actually, and I think it was a dark match because it didn't look like the cameras were uh, going for it, uh, mm -hmm. other than the main camera because we were uh, kind of up above. We could see where uh, Nigel McGuinness and Kelvin Kelly were uh, on their monitor, so we could kind of see if they were like you know doing the side cameras or anything like that. Um, so really cool to see some familiar faces there. Friend of the show, Logan Shilo, is going to pop up a few weeks as security, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and, uh, and, and I don't know if I want, I don't want to get into any spoilers, but really good matches with um, um, uh, Davey Richards and Mike Elgin had a rematch for Match of the Year yeah. that they had on one of their IP reviews. Oh, tremendous. I understand why people are, are into that barrel-chested mullet freak Okay, that was, uh, and, and, and the thing is, we didn't really, the crowd didn't lose a lot of steam throughout the night, probably partially because they had the fluffer, but also they would have one or two kind of lower end matches, like kind of this is more of a jobber match kind of thing, but they still seemed like really okay. good matches, uh, built up until whatever the main event was for that episode. So we kind of had a low point raise until a you know, crazy high point kind of thing going on, like the like the Elgin Davy Richards, or like the tag team matches with uh, with Haas and Benjamin, and then finally, and this is kind of the big story of the night. Uh, there was a Steel City Street fighting guys. You're you're not going to see this match if you're going to see it, depending on what happened here. Uh, you're not going to see this until probably the week before uh, the I pay per view. By the way, way things sorted out, uh, but. <sighs> And again, this is a little bit of spoilers. Oh, never mind. The video's not up anymore. Uh, but I'm sure it's going to be out there somewhere if you can find it. But basically, they had a, a crazy street fight between one of the Briscoes and Steve Carino. Um, hilarious match. Was it just Carino or was it also uh, Jimmy Jacobs? Well, it was a street fight, so everybody got involved. Oh, okay. Um, you saw Jacobs come out. You saw the other Briscoe come out with a wheelbarrow full of chairs, which I've never seen used in such a way before. Also, <laughs> he, he, bring, he brought out a, uh, a guardrail that almost took down the set. Because it got caught on nice. that. Yeah, it was hilarious. It was like a cartoon watching this thing. Uh, but the big thing was uh, they did a thing where they, and I've seen this before, where they took the uh, guardrail, sat it on four chairs, and Carino got suplexed off the top onto the guardrail. Mm -hmm. Looks like the back of his neck hit the edge of the guardrail instead of kind of taking the full thing flush. And I, I know, like, I uh, saw the referee fl flipping out. It looks like, like, I, somebody said that they called the cameras to stop recording right after it happened. I don't think there was even a pin. Uh, I wasn't entirely sure because they did a spot where the other tag team that's supposed to be involved in, in the angle uh, came out and jumped on a giant crowd of people in the front. Um, yeah. Which if you, you can see that part if you, if you find the video, if it's still out there somewhere. Um, so, I mean, there's this article I put on Facebook uh, where it was uh, Steve Carino suffers a, a potentially serious injury at Ring of Honor, and it was really going on about how there. I guess he was kind of taken to task for some really vicious chair uh, shots in a, uh, in a in a match in the Indies a few years ago, and he came back and had a comment. Uh, about how uh, you know, uh, well, he's he's taking necessary risk to make it look look real, um, and, and a little mm. bit, you know, a little bit of quote, you know, really good quote by Bret Hart saying, "Wrestling is an art that is, uh, in that is supposed to pretend to be very violent. It is a very physical job, but it should never be a job where you are very seriously." harm one each other. So I wanted yeah. to kind of uh, shoot this out to you guys. There's a lot of discussion on the Facebook, of course. Um, doing something like a crazy match like this and taking the kind of bump he did, uh, which, you know, could have gone very badly and looks like, it, and from what I understand, he did actually, and I couldn't see this from my angle, did actually himself crawl out 
uh, from the ringside area. I heard, I heard they brought out a backboard, but he... I saw the backboard the come out, but I didn't see him leave on it, but then right. everything was yeah. gone. Yeah. So, uh, and it sounds like he did walk away from, from the couple people I heard from that were there backstage. Uh, uh, you know, still you know, walking away. It turned out really, you know, for, for what it was, uh, 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 not as bad as it could have been. Uh, so I just want to kind of shoot out your thoughts on, on, on this kind of thing. Is this a case of... Uh, uh, you know, maybe Carino going a little bit too far. You know, we say a lot of stuff. People go too far doing stupid stuff on indie shows. This is for TV. But again, you know, we always go back to Ring of Honor is maybe a glorified indie at this point. Um, I have a higher opinion of it personally after seeing the show and how how things were presented and seeing the stuff coming up with it. Uh, but I wanted to get your sh- thoughts on it. WrestleFan, I know you were uh, a very, very, very... Uh, had a lot to say uh, on the, on the yeah. Facebook side. Um, I, I was kind of, I, I understand sort of a lot of the sides of it. Um, I, c- containing like the, in the article that you mentioned, um, I do, um, am very opposed to how Karina was talking about chair shots and how, you know, there's a certain way you can protect yourself and get hit in the, and get hit in the head with chair shots. I think that's sort of a dated method in the way that we've learned about concussions. Um, I've seen many companies nowadays that, they uh, they do like shots to the back with chairs, but they don't they don't I don't I don't think I can you know see a time where they've done shots to a head in a, in, with chairs. Some of the local time. companies are, are they they're using a lot of head shots, and I'm not really too crazy about it. If there's different ways to get around it. Yeah, you know, there's there's you don't have to. You know, you don't have to do headshots. In my, in my opinion, I think there's ways to work around it where it's still the same. You know, effect you're getting. Um. And yeah, to that part, I don't really agree with Carino in there. But to, to say the, the spot that he did at the ROH show was sort of an unnecessary spot and sort of, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that was kind of blown out of proportion because I've seen that done many of times before. And yes, a lot of times it does hurt, but it doesn't hurt them that severely. I mean, you know, it's a dangerous maybe, spot, maybe, regardless. I mean, but you're you're coming off on a guardrail like that. There is not going to be much give to it. But again, if you land right, you know, it, it'll definitely true. minimize it. But and, and and I've seen, you know, I've you know, I know people that you know they they you know, yeah, it hurts and it, you know it's horrible for them. And I can't I can't say it because I'm I'm not a wrestler, so it's not my it's a lot of times it's not my position to say this. So yeah, I'm not. Yeah. But I do think. You know, it's. I think it was sort of a freak accident. You mm-hmm. know, the, you know, it could have. A lot of times, it could have gone perfectly right the way he did it. Yeah. Um, I don't think it necessarily was an unnecessary spot. I don't think you can really dictate that. Um, if it was building to a feud, if it was, you know, yeah, maybe, you know, and to say the crowd size, I uh, maybe if it was a crowd of like ten people. Mm-hmm. Then I wouldn't say yo. If it's a crowd of like two hundred, no, this is, is like, this is a crowd of a few hundred people, and again, this is something that is going to be on national TV. The side, the crowd of which would be like a good indie show, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. a good size indie show. That's you know you can't say that it's unwarranted mm-hmm. or that it's unnecessessary. I think I've seen I look, I'll, I don't mean to like throw this company out there, but ACW. A lot of people at ACW like go balls to the walls on stuff, and they but they draw in a really good crowd. If it was them doing those same stuff in front of 10, 15 people, n- yes, and that is unnecessary. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I think another turn. Oh. Lost them there. Maybe we lost them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah we kind of continue that point. And I think, you know, you think about, like, if you're seeing it in front of, like, 10 people, I'm you know. Like unnecessary. And I think oh. maybe I, po- I think I posted this on. Mm-hmm. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh,. Fuck! What was my point now? Shit! Uh, Joy. <laughs> well, I wanted to kind of expand upon it, like, like, well, you know, you think about, like, okay, you're in front of just a couple hundred people, but you also get things something like your ACW, something like an IWC here locally, is something that gets out to tens, hundreds more, you know, uh, depending on their distribution. So, I, so I think, I think your, you know, butts and seats is not really equivalent to who's going to see this and is this a bigger deal, kind of thing. Right. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think, as I was going to say, I posted on the Facebook group, I think one of the clear evidence of unnecessary 
uh, unnecessary spots. I think it was like an IWA Deep South. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been watching this video a little bit here. Uh, there's some pretty they're crazy in, stuff. They're in like a they're in like a backyard. There's maybe like 30 people there. Yeah, a lot of these guys are untrained, and these guys my, are like getting scars for the rest of their lives. Uh, yeah, and it's all stuff. ridiculous stuff. I'm yeah. not. I I can I understand deathmatch, and mm-hmm. I can I get that it's a part of wrestling. I think a lot of like I'm not a fan of deathmatch tournaments. No, I think a lot of them are unnecessary because there's no fields in them. No, you know there's the, there should be a reason why these guys. It's are, just you know. spectacle at this point. Yeah. And so this video is literally every 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 spot from the show. It looks like, and yeah. and I don't need to buy the DVD because here's everything that happened without yeah. all the all the poor like timing and wrestling in, in between. So all I right. want to put a toss around real quick before we get out of here. Now, LB, what do you think of uh, of of uh, the Carino stuff? I think uh, I think at this point in Steve Carino's career, um, <clears throat> he's got something to prove. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's never been the guy, you know what I mean? He's never been the super top built guy, uh, and I think he's been at this for a very long time. And who knows how much longer he has left? So I think he he still wants to prove that he can be the guy and mm-hmm. he can do the mm-hmm. crazy stuff and take the abuse. Yeah, because I mean, the last time I the, the last time I was at literally the last time I was at a Ring of Honor taping was seeing Karina win a tables match with Colt Cabana. Mm-hmm. So this is a thing that comes up every once in a while with mm-hmm. Ring of Honor. So yeah, he's still trying to prove he's durable and he can go just as well as the younger guys. Mm-hmm. So he he'll do whatever you know he'll do the super crazy spots mm-hmm. like Jeff Hardy's been doing his entire life. Exactly. What about you, Sherman? What do you think of this? You know, and, and I saw a video of the spot before they took it down, and you know, I I, I didn't see the whole match, so it's hard to put it in context. But mm-hmm. you know, if 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 he doesn't botch the spot, if he lands that the way he's supposed to, we're probably not having this conversation. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing to take into consideration here. But I mean, I think at some point the feds have to come down and 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 take care of their own guys here. You know, they, I mean, these guys are dropping dead in their forties. They're, you know, things are going terribly bad for them later yeah. in their lives because of all the, the abuse from these, these brutal, you know, brutal spots and brutal matches and stuff like that. I think at some point, somebody has got to put their foot down much the way WWE has in a lot of, a lot of cases to say, you know, we're going to ban a lot of headshots. We're going to do all these things, you know, and it, the indie feds probably don't want to do that because they're, you know, that's the edge that they have at this time Yeah, in a lot of cases, you know what I mean? But I, I think, you know, it, just like every major sport that's going on right now, you almost have to save your guys from themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause all those guys are going to push the limits because they want to stick out. Absolutely. Yeah. There, there's no doubt about that. I mean, you, you go out, you know, to, to use the analogy of the NFL, you know, these guys, they're going to go, they're going to go helmet to helmet, head to head, whatever it takes. To, to, to make it happen and the only way to stop it is to to you know essentially to penalize them is to force them to stop you know to make it so penal <laughs> i said penal <laughs> um, <laughs> you know that they, they, they can't afford to do it for whatever reason you know mm-hmm. and, and unfortunately i think some of these feds are going to have to step up at some point and say you know you can't do this anymore we, we do not want spots like this um and it, it's probably not going to be super popular, but you know, you're you're going to have guys that are just like I said, drop. You know, how many wrestlers are just dropping dead in their forties and fifties and, and really cutting their lives short? And, and yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, it, it's it's sticky for sure. You know, but I I think that that's where you have to go with this at some point. So exactly. All right, wrestle fan. I think that's all for for the minute, right? That is all I have for this week in indie wrestling. Excellent. So let's go to what's going on in gold. We'll be right back with not to remember when, but something a little more political. Hmm. Be right back. Um, Fuck you, wrestle fan. Five months away. <laughs> you guys are the ones they that start- always campaign, and I don't do anything. <laughs> you know, it's not they too far. We can't painting for the presidency a, a year and a half ago. Thank Haven't you. you ever given a hand job with your mouth? That's not a hand job. Mm. <laughs> it's just, just a hand job with your mouth. Speaking oh, of which, yeah, we'll have to bring creative. up what, what all of us learned about Lenny Poffo this week. 
could. That's like the both demographic. What thing. state was that? It was like Wisconsin or something, wasn't it? Uh, Missouri. I Missouri? Think. That's about the same thing. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> what state it was. <laughs> So let's do this. I'm in the club bouncing. Trying to politic with this bitch, but I'm shouting. So I just let my gold do the talking for me. Diamond shining yellow and white, two-tone jewelry. Who is he? Fresh to death. Oh, yes. I'm what's happening now. Don't care what's next. Don't flex. Still this girl want to walk up to me. Try and get... Welcome back, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Here we go. We got. We're, we're not doing a remember when. We wanted to do something more themed. Uh, debate didn't really make, seem to make sense uh, because we kind of debate every week on one thing or another here on the Mayhem Show. We just don't have uh, our little pulpit things like they do when they wanted like uh, 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 Sheamus and uh, Big Show to debate the World Championship or something in that one time. Um, but otherwise, um, we we do have. Uh, something coming up in a few months, which kind of, kind of, it's voting. It's kind of our our own elections. It's the uh, Mayhemies, uh, where the, you know people are, are are eligible for vote of the year, guest of the year, things like that. So I thought for something a little bit different, in the spirit of what's going on, uh, uh, in in red and blues and in whatever is going on here, uh, some election or something. I, I don't know. Um, Who cares? I thought. Well, then I didn't, this wasn't my idea. Who, whose idea? Who brought this up? I don't even remember. Right, Chachi, Chachi, was this yours? No. Nobody wants to take credit for I it. I don't okay. have good ideas on this show. <laughs> but we thought, let's do our stump speech. I start fights and get the fuck out. <laughs> for what you should... What, you're perfect. So you're, you're, more, you're more like the news programming right. to the political. Yeah. Okay. Um... So uh, we're going to do kind of our stump speeches for uh, whatever you're eligible. Uh, most of us here is going to be host of the year. Uh, Sharman, you can be kind of the guest host of the year candidate if you want to throw out for that. Uh, so you have no no opposition attending today, except for maybe some of the guys in the uh, in the chat room. Uh, so uh, I, I just want to I just want to point out that you would be running against AJ. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're running against AJ, Bobby, and like Riz, and they will shank you. I swear. <laughs> I haven't really decided where like AJ, or Riz, and, and Bobby really kind of because I think they, we can upgrade them this year. But we'll see. We'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll pound that all out uh, uh, later on when we start putting the polls together for that. <laughs> you said pound it out. Pound it out. <sighs> so uh, let, let's set the tone here. Pop a lunchbox. Can you uh, can you take us to the stump speech first? All right. My fellow Mayhem Americans, <laughs> my name is DJ Lunchbox. You also know me as Papa Lunchbox, and that tells the story. <laughs> Folks, we've grown together here on the Mayhem Show. We've, 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 you've, you've seen me grow from a, a mad, bald person who chewed his way through the sides of energy cans and then smashed them into his face. To to a guy who would just show up weekly with wigs and masks on to the to the young man you see before you with hair and missing a beard and uh, with Star Wars posters in the background we have grown together we have we have we have grown together we have uh, uh, established this long term relationship you've been there for me and I've been there for you every step of the way mayhem americans every single step of the way dj lunchbox box thoughtfulriot.com we have grown as people as human beings together all the while shouting at wrestle fan and i think that's a good platform ladies and gentlemen if i am elected host of the year for 2012, I promise 2013, 20% more yelling at WrestleFan, 15% less yelling at Riz, 30% more blowjobs. That's right. I'm going to guarantee 30% more blowjobs if I have to do it my fucking self. And don't you think, don't you fucking think for a second that I don't know how to do it because I fucking know how to do it, all right? I went to camp. I went to camp plenty of times and I'm still in therapy about it, but don't you think I don't know how to do it? And I'm making you this offer, all right? Pop a lunchbox, blowjobs. I don't use any teeth. Some of my teeth come out and that's not a threat. That's a promise. Change. We need change. Last year, 
Chachi, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and sling mud at Chachi. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you that he's a he's an unfit candidate. He's a great. He's a great man. He's a, he's a good man and a fine fine host of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, but I do want to point out that uh, since you elected him uh, uh, host of the year, he has since. Uh, become controlled by the Illuminati. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Just a quick word about the Illuminati. Uh, they do not like they do not like sucking dicks. They're scared of that. Uh, they do not like yelling at WrestleFan. No, that's not true. Chachi yells at WrestleFan all the time. I, uh, I contradicted myself, and that, my friends, is exactly why you should vote for me. Vote DJ Lunchbox, Papa Lunchbox, however I end up on the ballot for host of the year. Thank you, right. Mayhem Americans, and good night. Go ahead, WrestleFan. WrestleFan... Uh, well, before let me preface that by saying, uh, you mentioned that you're going to do 15% less yelling at Riz. How can you do 15% less of zero? Um, I don't, may, and I'm asking that seriously because I don't know how math works. Um, I offer, <laughs> I didn't campaign, uh, for those that were uh, around for last year's campaign, I didn't campaign, okay? I was going to play nice. I was going to play straight, okay? No, not like that. Well, maybe like that. Hold on. <laughs> I offer two incentives. One, because of course, I, Lunchbox says he doesn't use teeth. No, don't listen to him. Don't listen. He is a liar. I, all, it's all teeth. It is all teeth. And don't tell me where I got my source. Or don't ask me where I got my sources. If you, I, I, I have two free hands. Okay, do you see these things? These are made for working. <laughs> And you may be saying, oh, no, I can't do that. I don't want to go to prison. Listen, as of June 19, there's no problem. There's no problem here, guys. Okay? The second incentive, by the way, as you know, I'm a college man. I am a, <laughs> I am a devout learner of everything's pro wrestling. I'm majoring in pro wrestling with a minor in arm drags. For every vote... <laughs> Every vote, I will give you one of the guest meals that are on my meal plan at the cafeteria here at, at U, the University of Texas at San Antonio. They're yours, but only with your vote. Do you want lukewarm barbecue chicken and potato salad? Okay. What? Because Russell fans <laughs> got it for you. Wow. I don't know. Go on with your propaganda. Go ahead, Sorg. Oh, well, I, I, I was going to toss to you, Josh. <laughs> nope. Incumbent uh, goes last. Incumbent goes last. <laughs> Sherman, I did, are you ready? Uh, you know, for your kind of guest spot, if you throw it out there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll riff a little bit here. It's my first time uh, on this this particular podcast, and I, I admit that I'm a little nervous. Um, but uh, I'll do my best here to, uh, to try to plagiarize Bill Clinton, uh, if I may, almost word for word. Um, I'd like to nominate myself as the uh, guest host of the year. Um, I'm cool on the outside, comma, cheers, applause, Com- and comma, but who burns <laughs> for America on the inside, comma, cheers, applause. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going as well as I had thought. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, uh, apparently, Bubba is is a little better of an orator than I am, uh, and that has nothing to do with oral sex either. Believe it or not, um, <laughs> seems to be a common theme in these. Uh, what I can tell you is this: if I win, and I, I understand I'm up against some some pretty tough characters here with with Bo Diggity and, and, and perhaps Bobby F. J. Town and, and whatnot, uh, I will personally send a set of demolition masks. Ooh. To every single one of you that votes for me, Bryce. every single one of you. Oh. So you can be Axe, you can be Smash, hell, you could be Crush if you'd like. Doesn't matter. Nobody can tell because you got the mask on. <laughs> Mister Fuji can escort you to the ring. <laughs> the possibilities are absolutely endless. So, uh, with that, I will say. I want, I want the Tuesday Night Delight to be the next president of the United States. I mean, guest host 
of the year uh, on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Cheers, applause, thank you. <laughs> first of all, first of all, I want to applaud my <laughs> colleague here, Shireman, for his uh, use of uh, both both uh, leather and spikes uh, in his uh, in his stump speech there. Um, Filthiest real- stump speeches. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, 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 I'm waiting for uh, the pictures to, to for him to show him in his own uh, demolition garb uh, out there for everybody to see to show off that he is completely behind what he's pushing out there. Uh, for me, for Sorgatron, a vote for Sorgatron is a vote to make sure this show keeps running. Is that right? Is that kind of sounds like uh, it? Is this, no, no. Well, the guy, the guy that's flipped in the look at this stuff. Look at this stuff! Oh my! Oh wow! Look at this stuff! Sorry, every he's week, the fourth wall. Every week, this is what I look at to bring the mayhem to you. All the buttons and knobs. Okay, that thing doesn't work anymore. But you get the idea. You get the idea. Hey, we, we make sure the wheels keep turning here in the mayhem show. You know that. You know that. We, I bring the mayhem. We bring we bring fantastic guests like Shireman, like Bo Diggity, like Logan Shulo, like Dalton Castle here to the show. Bring them here for seven years. Not going anywhere. Chaji. Well, my fellow mayhemers. So far, you've heard promises of blowjobs from from freaky, freaky men. (laughs) Less yelling. Hand jobs and stale food from teenage kids. And and Sorg threatening you to cancel the show. Oh, that's not what I said. You're putting words in my mouth, sir. That is what you said. I I run the show every Tuesday. It's not that hard. Don't let them fool (laughs) you. Alright? I can do it while looking at my tweets. Not that hard. I do it every week. So, I mean... (laughs) And it's been seven years. He's gonna show up. (laughs) (laughs) It's the only thing he has! This year, (laughs) after after voting me host of the year, I've I've brought the truth. I've told you how women's wrestling is. I, I, I've pointed out that there is no difference between intercontinental and world championships except for water. That's true. I tell you how it is each and every week, regardless of others' feelings, including WrestleFan, Riz. I will yell at you. It happens. It's what the people want. Chachi don't give a fuck. Change is bad. Another year of Chachi Bodiggity is another year where we tell you the truth on Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you. God uh, bless America. There you God go. bless the mayhem. There you go. Uh, from the... <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> I'm sorry, the chat room. On that note, yeah, my camera's all kind of weird. Okay, there we go. Hi. <laughs> um, so on that note, uh, go ahead. Talk about it. Start, start the conversation on the Facebook. Start the divided the divided conversations. This pick your candidates. Pick your <laughs> candidates. Tell us about it on the Facebook, on the open group. Please join us on there. Uh, tag tag your your hashtag Team LB, your hashtag Team Bo Diggity, your hashtag Team Blowjobs, whatever the hell it's going to be. Let's start it right now. We got until, let's do this in January. We kind of just ran late. That's why I was March or April last year. January is going to be the vote. Start it hard and heavy right now, guys. I want to hear from you. Why should you be the chat rumor of the year? Why should you be the co-host of the year? Why should you be the guest of the year? The chat room is already chanting for me. <laughs> what are you talking about? Where's what? the chants at? There's a what one are you more, looking at? There's a one more year chant. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, suck my dick. Wow. All right, with that, let's go to another... Uh... I am not Lunchbox. I will not promise blowjobs. And, and true. An illegitimate touching. Chachi's going to have a hard line on this illegitimate one. Illegitimate oh. touching? Yes. Illegitimate. There's nothing illegitimate about it. Emergency touching. Um, And let's go to Matt Mike and see his thoughts <laughs> for this minute of mayhem. Oh, 
Anime Hammers fans and friends across the land, it's Mad Mike once again with your Political Minute of Mayhem. Now, I don't get into politics much, but uh, Roger Stark 2012, it's the big ticket. Another good tag team is, I don't know, the tag team of Barry O and Just Joe. I'm just throwing that out there. But anyway, um, didn't get to watch Raw yet, because when I got home, I forgot to set my clock an hour back at my uh, apartment. So I didn't really get to watch much of wrestling. But it's kind of funny that all the good things we thought WWE was doing last week, they kind of reversed them all. So now we're going to get... The obvious result that we probably should have got an LSL with Punk going over Cena and Ryback not being involved in the decision. Shock of all shocks. This will probably lead to a Ryback versus John Cena match at TLC, maybe, I don't know. And Punk will go against Ray. Because why not? I don't know. But uh, yeah, kind of sucks that they completely changed the dynamic of that. And also, I didn't get to talk about this, but... What the fuck is up with the Jeff Hardy voiceover? It's a little weird. He's not fucking the check out my so-called life or Spider-Man or... No one cares about the thoughts in Jeff Hardy's head. No one. Absolutely no one. And especially James Storm is good, but he drinks too much. Really? That's your argument against James Storm? My argument would be that he's stale as fuck. They all are, except for Austin Aries. But it's kind of weird that Matt Morgan wants to be TNA champion when he's not the number one contender at the next pay-per-view. He's not going to be the number one contender at the pay-per-view after that because that's in the match with AJ Angle, AJ Rude and Storm. Which, by the way, I'd like to make a bet with someone that the person who loses that match will have a TNA world title shot before Bound for Glory. I don't know why, I think they'll just completely forget about that stipulation. But uh, anyway, this has been Mad Mike with your Minute of Mayhem. Vote Tunny and Backland 2012, bitches. Peace! Thanks, Mad Mike, for that Minute of Mayhem. Yeah, TNA, stop it. (laughs) (laughs) Stop it! Should we, uh, the voiceovers. Should we get you a rolled up newspaper? Just stop it. Wait, where, <laughs> get, down, get down. Get down. Here, get here, DNA here. Bad. Let me hit you with good wrestling. Let me roll up this Ring of Honor program from back in uh, 2008. Uh, Don't roll that shit up. Oh, no, I'm like, it's all right. It's all right. It's cool. It's cool. It's going to lose me, its value. I'm going to hit you with a Brian Danielson right here. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> No. You're peeing on the carpet of my wrestling fandom. Rub its nose in it. No. No. (laughs) No. No. I'm going to rub your... Okay. All right. No, no, no. A lot of work on this week's show. What's that? A lot of camera work on this week's show. I know. I got to get get used out of it before I have to return them. Um, We're upgrading. Well, I have to get them back. But I'm probably going to buy one. Um... Yeah, no, TNA, with the voiceovers and everything, you want to make it more reality TV, but you're breaking the fourth wall. You know, this is the reality TV. This is the worst thing that I've seen since since the Undertaker. I'm sorry. No, the ultimate warrior showed up to Hulk Hogan in the mirror, but to nobody else. (laughs) Remember that? Remember that? Only, yeah, only Parker Lewis. I that. <laughs> Parker Lewis. Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for a match to happen. Uh, you know, I, I, I would accept this on on Saturday morning slam. What? Okay, I would accept it on Saturday morning slam, on a Shikara, but not TNA. You know what it means? You know what this means? It means Jeff Hardy's highness has spread to us through the television. Mm. Ugh, it's like the weeping angels. They never move because we're looking at them through the television. Don't what blink would, when Jeff what Hardy's. What would Sin Cara's uh, uh, voiceover be like? It'd be an upside down question mark. Does he talk? <laughs> 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 he talk? Yes, because all his Hispanics are mute. So like... No, no, seriously, has he given some any sort of interview? The only no. time they gave interviews was when they were replaced with the guy that could speak English. No, he talks to uh, he talks to a Mysterio in the ring, but no, no, that's it. Like, yeah. like you always have him having conversations. How do you know? He's, his mouth's not moving. He's wearing a mask, you <laughs> fuckhead. <laughs> you can't see. You can't see his mouth anyhow. He has a Twitter account, head- if I'm not mistaken, 
Is it in Spanish? I, I, I have no fucking idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be all upside down question marks and exclamation <laughs> points. I'm, I'm still. If Zen Card doesn't have a Twitter account, I'm starting one tomorrow for him. <laughs> I think he does, though. I think he does. It's going to be. It's just five tweets a day, upside down question mark, right side up question mark. Mm. Ole. Ole. <laughs> Ole. Wow. Oh, Chachi insulted Mexicans. Achievement unlocked. Well, you, just have to, you know, you just have to do it how um, El Generico does his tweets and just end it with uh, El Generico web translated. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, I don't think it's a spoiler because I think this was revealed at the last I pay per view. El Generico versus Steen for the championship at Final Battle. Yeah, been a ladder I, match. I think we're going to get an I pay per view as long as there's. It's a Sunday at two p.m. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I, I'm almost to the point where I can pull Ring of Honor out of the uh, indie minute. I'm that. <laughs> I'm getting that excited about it right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, sorry. I, other than that. Uh, so yeah, the TNA still is questionable. Um, do, you, do you want to go because there's a, I guess something to tie into this whole Jeff Hardy thing? Okay. Uh, because for those that don't know, Scott Steiner does not like TNA. <laughs> Scott um, Steiner doesn't like anybody ever. Well, mainly TNA because he spent a month ranting about them on Twitter for fuck's sake. Um, but TNA basically, I, I, however long ago they sued Scott Steiner because of his defamation or whatever about the comments he was making. Scott Steiner has filed a countersuit against them and it's because um, he was allegedly injured uh, while at a TNA house show while wrestling a drunken Jeff Hardy. Oh, seriously? Mm -hmm. And watch, nothing will happen of it because it was a house show. It wasn't actually on pay-per-view where they couldn't avoid it. No, well, no. I mean, I I don't, well, that's not, I mean, just because it wasn't on TV doesn't mean it's not valid. It's not valid evidence. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, uh, apparently, because apparently he said he suffered nerve damage from that match or something. Oh. Um, Fuck him. We suffer nerve damage every time we watch TNA. <laughs> <laughs> Where's our money? That's true. That's true. <clears throat> we, we should start a class action lawsuit against TNA. For hurting our feelings. For headaches. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be so more like a. Po- or, a big opponent of, or not opponent, like opponent. Uh, you know, I'd be so much more behind this if it was coming from anyone but Scott Steiner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like honestly, so TNA, TNA's on Thursday <laughs> plus their occasional pay per view. Correct. Yeah. It's not really occasional. Yeah, and they have house shows, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that means every Thursday and any time there's a pay per view. I have a two to three hour headache, mm-hmm. and then it extends to Tuesday night for two hours when I have to relive the fact that I had a two to three hour headache. Mm-hmm. Correct. Sure. Hey, it's not good. I, hey, I like I like tweeting for the mayhem show site. You don't have to watch that shit. Yeah, but I have to read your tweets. And by the way, good work with that. Good work with that. And good thank, work. By the way, you, I, 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 we didn't get a chance to talk about this live. Well, there's a couple things. I now I'm thinking of it. First of all, throwing out to to Russell fan that there was a there was an eye pay per view like hangout Twitter or whatever was going on Saturday night that I didn't even know about it. <laughs> Secondly, and this happened a couple weeks ago. Remember when we were telling everybody to send us sassies for uh, self addressed stamp envelopes for. Uh, uh, Mayhem stickers. Mm-hmm. I got one a, a couple weeks ago from somebody in Hawaii. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Hello, ho- hello, Hawaii person. Hawaii is America. No, they voted it, or they will vote. <laughs> they <laughs> voted. I don't know if they who they vote for. I mean, that's kind of like Obama's home state, right? Yeah. Right. What? No, it's not kind it of. It is actually. It is. It is. That's where he was born. Was was in, was oh, in Hawaii? Is it really, Kenya. Uh, mm-hmm. No one can. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Sorg was just being super racist. I'm sorry. No, what's ra- wait a minute? What's racist? No, about- he's actually from Hawaii. He's actually born in Hawaii. Him, he, him he, and Matt Myra, they're both from Hawaii. Who? Matt Myra from the Nerdist. And this guy with Mayhem Show stickers. You That's see, exactly it all comes right. together. So does that mean he can communicate with uh, Samoans, the the headhunters? I mean, now that now that Lou Albano's dead, those guys are on an island by themselves out, oh. out here in America. <laughs> Lou Albano acted that, kind of like they a, were like in a universal Antonio translator like for all ago. Samoans. As long as he lived, uh, we can understand what they were saying. But that's why The Rock hasn't been back for quite right. a while because it's all just gibberish and click, click sounds now. And we, also, just, and, we could, and we could also continue to do the Mario. 
Okay, Mercy fan. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, no, no the, uh, the headhunters aren't uh, stationed away somewhere in Samoa because they were in San Antonio like four months ago. Um, and they talk. But I thought they like were a, from like Altoona or something or Allentown or something like they, that. What, they talk. But they Alpha can't has talk a school without, up there. But they can't talk without yelling. <laughs> mm. Neither mm. can Mad Mike. Okay, anyways. Um, so do we want to talk about Lanny Poffo's penis? No. no. Why not? He can <laughs> suck his own. That's what <laughs> else a do we need on the to Mayhem say? Show, on the Mayhem Show Facebook about it. And he's so He sounds so intellectual it's a, talking it's a preview, about it. It's a preview of a full documentary, I think, for Lanny. Oh, Bob, I hope though. the whole thing isn't about his but, penis sucking. But the only part they include in the preview is about the fact that he can suck his own penis. But is that really an advantage? Does that make me want to see the documentary? Or, I, I don't know. Because it was pretty complex in the story as it is. Listen, if if self penis sucking is gonna win an election <laughs> I, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> you know, I love how you that's, walked out but word. walked right in for the penis conversation. Uh, I know. Well I was gonna come in and apologize to the Mexicans that I insulted because I looked up and saw a constellation that looked like a sombrero. <laughs> so I, I took so I took that as a as a sign that I should be nice to the Mexicans. Oh wow <laughs> <laughs> you like looked up and saw a sign in the stars, man. I did. And it's hard to see stars in the middle of the city like we are. Yeah, and not tonight. You can not see tonight. I've been like, I've been enjoying that lately. But yeah, so I was. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, Mexican. <laughs> um. Wow. Olay! Olay! I was trying to come up with a, a, a joke about Damien Sandow uh, sucking his own dick too, but it's just not out there. Um. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. He does um, it and then he does a cartwheel, which is really dangerous. <laughs> Ooh. The best thing I ever heard about, about sucking your own dick is it, it's not that great because it doesn't feel like someone else's mouth. It feels like someone else's dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's where you cue the the more you know music. Yeah. Uh, the more you the star know. goes star. Actually, Craig Ferguson. That's where I heard it. Craig Ferguson said it. <laughs> oh, man. Craig Ferguson would know. Craig Ferguson sucked his own dick. I oh, so raw last night. Uh, apparently, <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of sucking your own dick, raw was last night. Um, so did we just complete this man of the survivor series match that we made the week before? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I know I kind of like woke up and slept through parts of it. Like I, I just was really tired, but, but I was between Fandango and next thing I knew there was a three way match. And I'm like, what happened to the survivor series match? I bounced. I thought we were all set for it. I bounced. What happened? Apparently. Well, it started with Miz saying that he was out. Yeah. Which I thought was like, that was quick. Yeah. Then they replaced him. Uh, uh, Barrett, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Then, in in return for like, a, a, a favor that had to be paper uh, written down on paper. Okay. Paul Heyman's following our political campaigns. <laughs> I guess. Um, but uh, so, 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 so how was Raw otherwise for those that stayed awake for it? Well, um, eh. yeah, you're out. The Mexicans eh. uh, imitated the primetime players, which was kind of funny. Yeah, I saw that part. Yeah, it was I kind of funny. That never, that never gets not funny. And yeah, then yeah. Uh, um, Vicky once again didn't show us AJ <laughs> having sex with John Cena. So that was kind of disappointing. Um, oh, oh, yeah. And then uh, Vince came out and announced that Ryback was getting another title shot. So I, changed, shot so I, I, I threw a fit and uh, I shut wrestling off and watched Gone in 60 Seconds. Because <laughs> that's exactly how long it took for Vince to uh, get me to change the channel. Hmm. Hmm. So you're not you you're not wrong. I mean, I didn't hang in for much uh, much farther after that. So. So, I mean, it, it got to that point where, like, again, I was getting tired of, like, round nine, and I, it was just like, wow, I got two and a half, or, like, 8.30, I'm like, I got two and a half more hours of this. I can't do this. <laughs> like, this is the first I can't week where I'm do like, this, guys. I can't keep this up. I can't keep up this pace. I, it's too much, man. Well, you I don't, I don't remember the last everything. time I stuck around for a full three-hour episode of Raw. And I, and I I'm, don't I, remember and the last... I'm wondering Man, if that's seen. everybody, you know, because I, I mean, even you guys in the hangout, I mean, let's be honest, you guys aren't paying attention to the entire Raw. No, you guys we're, are, we're doing a lot of those, look at those photographs all throughout Raw. <laughs> exactly. 
It's like, look at those exactly. photographs. Uh, <laughs> so I guess I turned you guys off to see if it was better to actually pay attention to Raw, and I fell asleep. So that's not a good sign. Uh, I yeah, we're, we're way more entertaining than Raw. Sharman, what, what's your Monday night uh, routine here? I, I got to tell you, I try to watch Raw uh, in most instances here, but to me, the three-hour Raw is just, it's, it's insanity, you know? I, I mean, the, the WWE and wrestling in general is only going to be really successful if you're able to bring in the lay person, someone who's not necessarily a, a, an every night watcher, you know, that, that's following the, 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 the federations like the way that you guys do or the way that I do and, and different things like that. You want the average person to want to watch Raw for some reason. And let me tell you, a three-hour Raw is not a turn-on for fucking anybody. No, no. So I, I just I have no idea what the what 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 the deal is, but they, they need to cut it out. What is, what is you know two hours is plenty, plenty. Two hours is arguably too much. It's you know? really at the point like you're being sold a pay per view for about nine hours a week, and then you want to go pay for another three hours of wrestling. Oh God! Each month, sometimes twice a month. Wait until wait until WrestleMania rolls around, and they have six weeks of build before WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, the nine hours a week. You're going to build build a pay per view with what six weeks at nine hours? I can't do the math right now. Um, that's a lot. It's a lot the, of hours. The, the answer is it's a lot of fucking hours. It's a lot of times I'm going to hear the theme song that's going to be burned in my brain. That every time I hear it on Kiss for the next like year, I think about WrestleMania. Mm. That is a good song. It's beyond. It's maddening. You know, and it, this gets complained about up one side and down the other, but it's maddening that in a three-hour RAW, there's so little wrestling. But there's more than there used to be. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, really. But but still, did I did I go back to you know again conversations I was having with these guys about uh, Ring of Honor and why they're like I can't you know I I I, I can't watch Raw and stuff because there's too much drama going on. This is just wrestling sport, you know. This is what I'm here for is for the wrestling part, you know. Even the drama and the storylines are shorter, you know. They're they're not as nuanced as like. Who did John Cena sleep with? You know, it's like, really? Uh, especially lately. Doesn't it seem like uh, Raw and SmackDown, I feel like, both began the same way. Where they're kind of going the TNA route. Where they're yeah, like, they're doing we'll those have, weird, like, fucking... We'll have the latest on this situation. And it was like that dramatic voice at the beginning and all this crap. And it's like, oh, you're that is the biggest turnoff for me right now. Come on. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's, just, it's just another way for them to turn it into a variety show. It is. It is. And I get I, I get that it's like this and that and the other thing. But it's just it's too much of and not. It, ah, ah. I yeah. At least we were entertained for a while by like, OK, we got a bunch of good matches. You know, it almost feels like like if you want to stay with that Monday night, you really need to throw away everything else at yeah. that point. But then you're missing, like, oh, yo, I want to see what's going on. Because you, you can't sit there, like, you know, like we do. It's like, oh, I want to see uh, uh, such and such get pushed or whatever, you know? Uh, if you just saw with the Wade Barrett, you know, getting squashed last week on, on, on Raw, you didn't see him actually getting over on SmackDown if you're a Wade Barrett fan. You're not seeing him, you know, doing, you know, what could be a really cool match with Sheamus in the UK on Wednesday night on main event because we need that show all of a sudden, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, one thing I do like about main event, it is more wrestling focused, or at least like the whole idea that we build to this one match and then build out from it, and then we just have another match that sets up the next week. It's so clear you cut. Up, it's refreshing at that point. You brought up uh, Ring of Honor because mm-hmm. I actually watched their past week's show, and it was one of their Road Rage episodes. So it wasn't like from a taping. Mm-hmm. It was like from they they showed a match from one of their like big like live events, like one of their DVD shows. Actually, the, I think it was from. Uh, I thought it was the last eye pay per view. Was a lot of it. I think it was Lethal and uh, Davey Richards. Which I think it was the Glory by Honor, which was an eye pay per view. I think it was. Um, but the the first like thirty minutes was just like highlights of like two matches, and then like some recaps of some of their feuds, and then it was just that match. They had the Davey Richards Jay Lethal match in full. That was so refreshing, <laughs> and it was easy to digest, and it built to something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know. And it's just kind of catching up because I think they realize, uh, I don't know what the numbers are, but they realize probably the majority of people are watching do not get those eye pay-per-views. 
you know, I, yeah. which I think is fine. I think they're making money from just having the show and the advertising and everything like that. But still, that's still where they're kind of building up to. They're trying to get people to that point, but it's kind of hard to get people to that point technologically, you know? Right. So, uh, but still, like I said, it's refreshing. If you just follow along with that, you have a pretty good idea of what's happening. You're getting really good matches. Um, and if you want to take the next step, I really think, I feel like, I feel like if you take that step where I want to see, I like this stuff so much on a weekly basis. I want to see more of this, not restricted by commercials and times and all of that. And I think you would really benefit when you go and see those hyper pay-per-views. Like I said, I'm really, I really want to aim to do the December one to see how the quality of those shows are, at least like mm. as far as watching the stream. Uh, I, you know, I kind of worry it's not going to be as good as when I go watch a WWE <laughs> pay-per-view online. Um, you know, through WWE.com or anything like that. Uh, so I, I just kind of want to see what, like, what is the full experience that they're trying to bring to us, you know? Yeah. Um, it's also so much harder that when they, you know, have so many events that are going to be DVDs, you know? Mm. So, I mean, that's a tough sell, especially these days. Because who's, who's sitting there like, I got to buy every DVD, you know? I, I, don't, I, I just don't really see that happening, Cause especially as late as they come out. Because those things come out like sometimes like two months later. Yeah. And then they're so much further on TV, you're you're kind of behind. It. I, I go see that match, but it's so kind of like time cut off. You know, it seems like it hasn't met. It's it's funny they do IP reviews, but then they do this DVD market that doesn't seem to have met the internet generation. It's harder, I think, for Ring of Honor since now there are more widely known. That's why you have that problem with like, oh, so there's a delay on this DVD. It's not the same feeling as watching it live anymore. Mm, exactly. Because and I think that's worse now, worse for them because they're so well known now. Yeah, or so, or so not well known, so widely known now. Exactly, exactly. And, and then they need to do more, like yeah, like eye pay per view kind of stuff. They do have, and I do wonder because they do have the. Um, see, they have they have the one where you can get a membership and you get a vi uh, video. And I'm wondering yeah. if those DVDs pop up on there. So, uh, I'd have to double check on that. I'm not gonna, sure. Uh, yeah, I know well, you get the Ring of Honor TV. I, I mean, know you get you get the TV the uh, if you're if you're signed up to a certain point. But I think if you you pay monthly, I'm not sure. Videos. We'll, we'll look at that. But but I wonder if those if like new DVDs are included in that. That's almost worth it. That you know, is kind of worth that, it. Yeah. That is kind of worth it because then you could get get in and it's like oh at least when the DVD's out I can go see it. You know. Mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of like fill in the gaps with that if you're just like, I want more of this stuff. So, all right. Well, on that note, guys, is there anything else we want to touch base on before we get out of here? Anybody? Uh, I don't think so. All right. All no, right. I'm good. All right. So let's go around and learn. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Papa Lunchbox. Look at this photograph. No. <laughs> <laughs> is that not what I'm allowed to learn? No, no, no. no. Um, I, I asked to steal my what I learned from uh, from wrestling this week from somebody who commented on one of Brandon Stroud's columns, and he said uh, uh, the new um, what the fuck is it called? The new Paranormal Activity starring AJ and John Cena looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's awesome. that's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> Wrestle fan. Uh, another one related. Uh, I learned from wrestling this week. I learned from DJ Lunchbox this week that uh, Oksana <laughs> missed the uh, Halloween show, so she made up for it this week on Raw. Uh, she's dressed as a slutty carpet. Nice, nice. I thought that looked like which also which also made the Brandon Stroud column. That was via DJ Lunchbox's mouth in the <laughs> column. So <laughs> awesome, Sharman. How about you? Uh, two things, sir. I learned that. Uh, should my marriage ever go to hell and I was looking for a little um, oral or uh, manual uh, <laughs> get off that I should come see you guys because apparently <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing. Uh, 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 I'll give you my business card. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they can sell that in Texas. <laughs> anything goes down there. Anything mm -hmm. goes. It's the mm -hmm. Lone Star State. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes it's loner than others. <laughs> the other thing that I learned is that, uh, boy, I, I can't even, must not have been really great because I can't even remember what it is. Fuck all you guys. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Chachi, how about you? I learned that it takes a two syllable name in a title match to uh, make me lose all interest and put on a crappy movie that I didn't really want to watch to begin with. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, seriously. I like, I like I, that movie. I like that movie. I, I, it's a fine movie, but I don't want to watch it on, uh, what was it? Spike or FX at oh. 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, but seriously, I, I understand punishing CM Punk the first time. By making him face Ryback in a title match. Now they're just punishing the rest of us. <laughs> but um, <laughs> as far as I remember, and I've been watching wrestling for a really long time at this point, but uh, pretty sure that there's this whole structure, you know, number one contenders, you know, special title chances for when you win a match, you know, rewards. Also, um, no, what no, the no. fuck did Ryback do? Who the fuck did he blow? He won a number one contenders match against JTG. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> to but, be uh, fair, but also, he has done also, more than Brock Lesnar to earn his title shot. <laughs> and when I say also, Brock Lesnar, I mean Brock Lesnar in MMA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. He lost the match. He won the match. He got a title shot. <laughs> also, yeah. also going back, to, uh, going back to the uh, Brandon Stroud column on that thing. Uh, you know how like. Like a year ago, Punk was like able to stand up to Vince McMahon and tell him off about all the horrible shit he does. Yeah, and now he's afraid to somehow talk to him. Yeah, because he punished. has to carry Ryback in a title match. But it's not. But he was gonna have to face Ryback anyways with the Survivor Series match. So why is he worried now? Because there's four other guys to help carry Ryback in a match. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I learned this week. Uh, fuck Ryback! <laughs> fuck Ryback, yes, yes. Also, uh, well, hey, from... Well, do, 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 no. Oh, uh, Bobby says that R Ricardo Rodriguez has been burned by coffee and chili, forcing him to don a mask as El Loco again. That's uh, on Slam, by the way. Also, he will be... Well, he will go by a different assumed name every week, such as El Pantalones, La Biblioteca, and El Bicicleta. 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 And no, no, it's La Bicicleta. Mm. Uh, Riz learned that WWE wants you to know not to try the air guitar at home. Uh, yeah, there's a new Don't Try Us at Home with, with Heath Slater. <laughs> um, I, I learned... Way, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, Heath Slater looks fucking weird in eyeliner. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, okay, and I learned... I want to leave you with this. Stone Cold E.T., this is Stone Cold E.T., and I just want to order a couple White Castles to go. What the fuck? I'm so sorry. Can you repeat that again? I said Stone Cold E.T. would like a couple cheeseburgers and maybe a drink, and I'd like to get out of here as soon as possible, and that's the bottom line. Hey, do you want to tell us? I can't understand anything you're saying, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, E.T., to pull up what side? Just pull up to the first window. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> How long is this drive-thru, for one thing? <laughs> you know Stone Cold E.T. <laughs> and there's nobody at the window. For you on audio, this guy has an ET mask. This window? A very authentic. Excellent. <laughs> this window. <laughs> so this was something that was show, shown to me uh, uh, on the way to Ring of Honor by Sean Graham. Um, to the point where <laughs> we explained the figure at him. <laughs> He's at a White Castle, by the way, uh, if you can't see that. So... <laughs> So to the point where uh, he meant he just like just yelled Stone Cold ET lines in the middle of the Ring of Honor show, and the entire line of three or four guys next to him all started cracking up because they've seen the thing and wanted to do a Stone Cold ET at the Burger King on the way home. He's still waiting for them. They wouldn't come to the window because they don't know what the fuck's going I'm on. Saying here. something. <laughs> <laughs> this is Stone Cold ET, and I want to order a couple cheeseburgers, and that's the bottom line. Because you know Stone Cold E.T. like to come to White Castle or a couple of cheeseburgers to fill me up before I whoop some ass. Give me a hell yeah if you're down with Stone Cold E.T. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs>
<laughs> you get the idea. You can search Stone Cold. I love the Andy. impression just gets worse and worse as he goes on. <laughs> like, and it's just horse. an angry He's Southern trying man. so hard. It just gets hoarse as he goes. It, it's amazing. Uh, but the visual, if you're on audio, just go search for that. Uh, the visual really, really kind of takes it away there. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, wow, that election thing really popped up there, didn't it? Um, on that note, jeez. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks, Charmin. First time on. Everybody give him a hand. Finally joining yeah. us. Yeah. So we're going to take a suggestion. <laughs> he was inspired by the Stone Cold E.T. Uh, so we want to go out big here on Mayhem Show. Again, we're going to be leaving here uh, a couple weeks before Christmas. So we're going to have the big uh, Mayhem uh, Christmas show. I was just getting a message of a special guest who has not been uh, uh, live here on the Mayhem Show. Maybe joining us for that christmas episode uh but we want to fill in anybody else are we missing anybody out there anybody that should be on here like shireman who we've been neglected for so long so very long i, I don't know you, you're always responding to us on twitter and everything on the mayhem show account like i said i think it's downer and insulting that i've never been on the show that's right <laughs> it's our laziness it's our laziness so uh so we're gonna fill it's it up try damn to, conspiracy gonna get a lot of different people we'll try to get a couple guests here all throughout the holiday season and uh, finish 2012 off uh, right. And uh, we'll jump right in celebrating the seventh year uh, in, in 2013. As long as the minds don't get us first uh, and all that. So, guys, check us out again. WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Blip TV, Roku, Stitcher, and everywhere else fine podcasts are listened to or watched. Drop us a line at... Get time at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0, at Mayhem Show on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. We have the Facebook open group where a lot of the discussion that we... Uh, let the reference back to uh, happen. So please join us there for a lot of the conversation. Also, WMS Gold, $1.99 on your iOS app store and your Amazon app store. Support the show. Get links and exclusive content. Yeah! Uh, again, I'm Sorgatron for Charmin Chachi, WrestleFan, Papa Lunchbox, and the awesome chat room, Mayhem Show. Out!